yeah. So uh, this uh, this presentation is visible. So, uh, the truth of the new covenant has a liberating effect. That's why uh, I wanted to share this because it has done a, it has brought a liberation in my own life. Uh, even though we are born again and thus are in the new covenant, there is a tendency for us to live by the old covenant way of life. The old covenant way of life is more religious type of life. Okay, so. Uh, now, uh, what is the meaning of the covenant? Covenant is an agreement. So God is God is making an agreement. The first covenant, God made an agreement with the, His people, which were the people of Israel. All the others were idol worshippers, but He made a covenant with His people, the descendants of Abraham. Okay, and uh, it is found in Exodus chapter. 19 verse 5 and 6. All of you must remember this. Uh, these key verses. Exodus chapter 19 verse 5 and 6. Now then, if you will obey, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. This was spoken by God to Moses on Mount Sinai, okay, As the people camped at the, uh, the wilderness of Sinai, uh, this was spoken to them. The wonderful uh, promise of God that if you obey my voice, then you will be my own position. So that is a special uh, uh, privilege that they were going to have and they all agreed, but they, they miserably failed. I want to be, uh, they all uh, agreed, but they miserably failed. And I want you to, if you have your Bibles to refer Romans chapter 9, here we see how they fail. Romans chapter 9. And why, why we have to see it? Because if we do the very same things, we'll also fail. That's right. Romans chapter 9, verse 30 to 32. Okay. What shall we say then that the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness attained righteousness, even the righteousness which is by faith? But Israel... Pursuing a law of righteousness did not arrive at that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith. But as though it were by works, they stumbled over the stumbling stone. So they did not, God gave them the promise that God, they could have reached out by faith and asked his help. But they were trying by their own efforts and they failed. And that's why God made a, another covenant, a new covenant. That is uh, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 to 12. Uh, it says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. Ah, now see this. I will put my laws into their minds, and I will write them upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach everyone his fellow citizen and everyone his brother saying, Know the Lord. For all will know me from the least to the greatest of them. This is so important because in this new covenant time, we don't need a prophet. We don't need even a pastor to show us who God is. From the least to the greatest of them, we all can know God. Our, only our hearts has to hunger for, him, hunger for Him. And then it says, I will be merciful to the iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. This is such a Wonderful! It's promise after promise, which only God is God is giving. Five times He says, "I will, I will," uh, and there is no uh, in this covenant. It is a one one sided covenant, you can say. But God is saying, "I will do, I will do," and uh, and that's why the Bible says this is a better covenant enacted on better promises. Okay, I think we all agree to uh, that. It is a better covenant and a better promises. Okay. So now. Uh, when we think of this, uh, if, we, if we look in uh, Galatians chapter 4, uh, Galatians chapter 4, uh, already we have recapped about it. Uh, Galatians chapter 4 speaks about uh, uh, two women, that is uh, Hagar and Sarah. And verse 24 of chapter 4 says, This is allegorically speaking, for these women are two covenants. One proceeding from Mount Sinai, bearing children who are to be slaves, and she is Hagar. So the Bible is saying that comparing two women, one is Hagar, who uh, represents the old covenant, and Sarah, who is a free woman, representing the 
new covenant. So, uh, so that is the first allegory. Now, seeing from the Bible, as I was reading the Bible, I noticed, though the Bible does not mention it as allegory, it speaks about two mountains, and you'll find in that passage it's mentioned about the new covenant. That's the that's a that's a great thing about it. It's speaking about two mountains, but it's mentioning about the new covenant there. Then it is speaking about two tablets, and in that passage it is mentioning about the new covenant again. So it's interesting. So though the word allegory is not written, it's it's an allegory we can take. And then two ministries that is found in Second Corinthians chapter three, which is a full chapter on the new covenant. Okay, so we will just go through this fast. Two women, Galatians four twenty-two. Uh, to 31. Uh, Hagar, uh, who is a slave of Abraham and uh, Sarah, represents the old covenant, the slave master relationship. You know? And uh, lives in the fear of the mas master and no confidence before God. That is the life that you know we can live in the old covenant. You know, that no confidence. People who are in the old covenant who loved God, like David and all, they had they, they went close to him, but the general majority, you can say, uh, had that uh, lack of confidence before God. Now, the second part which uh, we should know is that Ishmael was uh, born of, uh, through Abraham and Hagar by the natural means. And so, uh, living the Christian life with our own efforts and determination is by a natural means. That will always fail. Just like we read in Romans chapter 9. The, the, the Israel pursuing a law of righteousness failed because they did not do it by faith, by, but by works. Okay, and so we'll be defeated by sin. Okay, now contrary to that is Sarah, who is the wife of Abraham. She's a free woman, and it, uh, this represents a new covenant, which is a father-son relationship. This is very very important because the Romans eight fifteen says, "For oh, you have not received the spirit of slavery." Leading to fear again, but you receive the spirit of adoption as sons, by which you cry, Abba, Father. Galatians 4, 6 and 7 also speaks that we have received a spirit which will cry, Abba, Father. So we must be bold enough to say, called our father, daddy, whatever, uh, you know, in our own mother tongue we can call. But we must, it will not come by feeling, but we have to say it by faith and then it will become true in our life. Okay, And then we must believe in his love. We have uh, known his love through the word of God must believe simply just like Abraham believed you must believe okay it doesn't come by feeling it is by belief in his love and uh, and Isaac was born out of uh, uh, was born by a supernatural means when Abraham and Sarah could not uh, produce children that was the time when Ab uh, Isaac was born supernaturally because it is God's birth and even so, the Christian life is, is not by our own efforts. It is We have to live by the promises of God. When we find something, you know, when we are anxious, the word of God says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall fill your hearts. Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. But tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient is for the, uh, for the day is the, uh, the trouble of the present day. So we live by the promises of God, then we can live a victorious life. I want to encourage you on these two points. Okay, that we have finished now the two women. Now we'll go to the two mountains. Okay, uh, two mountains that you want to uh, look at. We have to read Hebrews chapter 12, verses uh, 18 to 21. Okay, uh, the first, first mountain, which speaks about two mountains. One is Mount Sinai, which we saw. Mount Sinai was a time, a place where Jesus, where God gave the old covenant. Okay, it represents the old covenant. So it says, "For you have not come to a mountain that may be touched, or to a blazing fire, and to darkness and gloom and whirlwind, and to a blast of trumpet, and the sound of words, which sound was such that those who heard begged that no further word should be spoken to them, for they could not even bear the command." Even if a beast touches the mountain, it will be stoned. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I am full of fear and trembling. So when we see this passage, we've, the old covenant was given 
with all these things accompanied by a blast of trumpet and then the lightning and fire and smoke and all that it came with glory you know it, it didn't come just like silently it came with tremendous power and glory but people were afraid and what they said uh, in exodus 2020 20, uh, people said moses you speak to us let our god speak to us that is all found in, uh, in exodus chapter 20 and moses said in exodus 2020 20, moses said to the people do not be afraid okay for god has come in order to test you and in order that the fear of him may remain with you so that you may not sin these people did not know the fear of god god's presence and the, the, that reverence and that fear of god they had to learn and uh, so the, the these were people who were being introduced to what was sin and so they were taught the fear of god and so the fear of god was to keep them from sin so the motivation here the motivation for obedience okay what is going to motivate them the fear of god god is holy god is uh, you know so mighty and powerful he can punish and we need to uh, obey so that was the motivation now when you come to the uh, next passage uh, as, as i said it speaks about two mountains uh, verse 22 onwards it says but you have come to mount zion now it's speaking of another zion another another mount mount zion to the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem the heavenly jerusalem is called as a mount zion and to myriads of angel to the general assembly of the church of the first born who are enrolled in heaven and to god the judge of all and to the spirits of righteous men made perfect and watch this now and to jesus the mediator of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood which speaks better than the blood of Abel. So here we see the mention of the new covenant. Just like two covenants are mentioned about the two women. Here it's speaking about the new covenant. And the blood of Jesus, is a sprinkled blood, speaks better than the blood of Abel. Because the blood of Abel cried for justice. Okay, But the blood of Jesus, can you tell me what it cries for? Anybody? You can just unmute yourself. Sorry, I should have made it more attractive, but uh, only for the lack of time. Anybody can say, the blood of Jesus speaks about what? Forgive them, for they do not know what they do. So, blood of Jesus speaks about mercy. Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. It speaks about love. Okay? And uh, uh, the kindness of God leads us to repentance. Okay, the, the thief on the cross saw some love, the love of Jesus, and it caused him to repent. The woman, uh, the immortal woman in Luke chapter 7, when she saw Jesus, she had tears of repentance. The love of God leads us to repentance. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 verse 19, that we love because he first loved us. That is a tremendous power there. And the motivation, dear brothers and sisters, is the, the powerful motivation not to sin, is the love of God. Love is the motivation. You know why? Because we see that Jesus has done so much for us. And when we do some sin, you know what we, are, what we can think of? That I am cruci crucifying him more. I am causing him more pain. That will be the preacher that we'll get. And then we say, because I love him, because he loved me so much, and I don't want to, I don't want to make him sad. I, would, I don't want to cause him more grief. Every time, you know, whenever I've sinned, I've only said that, Lord, I've, I've caused you pain again. I'm sorry for that. I'm not, I'm not thinking about hell. I'm not thinking about any other thing. I'm thinking about how much I've hurt Jesus. And that's a tremendous motivation that will make us to keep, uh, keep away from sin. I want to, if you have experienced it, you will know what I'm saying. Okay? And the Bible says such a powerful thing. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's why the Apostle John says, and his commandments are not burdensome. Today I know that. When I was young, I, was, I used to think that, you know, God is telling me to give up this. Give up. 
so you all are, you all are facing the same thing but i want to encourage you that his commandments are not burdens <clears throat> okay so now we go to the two tablets <clears throat> uh, uh now you we all turn it turn your bibles to second uh, corinthians chapter 3 second corinthians chapter 3 is very good it's all, there are only 18 verses but it's fully speaking about the new covenant this whole chapter is speaking about the new covenant okay speaking comparing also with the old covenant but um, yeah so uh, this deals with our perceptions and our outlook okay if we have uh, the old testament old covenant outlook and the new covenant outlook okay the tablets of stone we read uh, from 2 uh, uh, to 6 of second uh, corinthians chapter 3 you are a letter written in our hearts known and read by all men being manifested that you are a letter of christ cared for us written not with ink but with the spirit of the living god not on tablets of stone but on the tablets of human hearts now it's speaking about two tablets just like two women is speaking about about two mountains now he is speaking about two tablets okay tablets of stone not on tablets of stone but on tablets of human hearts and such confidence we have through christ toward god not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves but our adequacy is from god who has also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant not of the letter but of the spirit for so the letter kills but the spirit gives life can you notice that again about a new covenant coming here okay so these are not uh, something which uh, is accidental it's speaking about something and the more we know of it more we will get you know that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free so so here it's uh, the tablets of stone were the commandments written on this you know god wrote that stone Uh, the commandments is not man the finger of god wrote those com- uh, commandments but on stone so the commandments can be on a stone or on a scroll or on a book but it's an external command okay it has not been re- it is if it is not written in our hearts it is something we are looking and say ha ah, there is a commandment i have i should obey it i should not do this but i should do this and we are that's an external commandment okay and and if we are living by that spirit like how the old covenant people live then we will fail but we have to live by the spirit okay and it's a life of struggle to keep the commandments that is the uh, tablets of stone representing the old covenant now the tab- uh, tablets of human hearts where we, we have read in uh, hebrews chapter 8 that god writes his laws upon our hearts and puts it in our minds okay that represents the new covenant okay so god uh replaces the heart of stone when we were unconverted you know we were hardened by the sin so that stony heart he removed and put a heart of flesh because only on a heart of flesh he can write something and uh, uh and then we, we we experience the circumcision of the heart what is circumcision of the heart by the spirit not of the letter you know the holy spirit tells us let's see when we are proud okay you say that you are trying you are trying to boast something the holy spirit says no you don't need to say all those things you know if you if you uh, or you are speaking something and the holy spirit says that is an unkind thing okay that is the circumcision of the heart by the spirit now here we don't read any word okay but the holy spirit is ministering to us okay and then the most important thing in the new covenant is that god works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure philippians 2:13 which uh, this is a verse which uh, brother <coughs> vijay shared yesterday it's a very powerful verse uh, anything in our life as we read earlier that we are, we, uh, it says in verse 5 not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves that is the that's the way that we have to live we are not adequate in ourselves but our adequacy is from god god will has made us adequate as servants of the new covenant okay so our adequacy is from god second corinthians 3 5 and then hebrews 13 20 to 21 says working in us who's working god is working in us that which is pleasing in his sight so this was not present in the old covenant 
you know, that God works in us both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Working in us that which is pleasing was not there. And uh, Romans 8, 26 says, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. So we have got the Holy Spirit today to help us to live this life. Okay. So remember that anything that we do, remember this verse, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, that God, or you can say, Lord, you work in me. I'm willing, but you work in me and you give me help. So Lord, that's the Lord will start working in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So that is the tablets of human heart. And I don't know whether this is one of the most important uh, sections. Uh, two ministries. Again, it is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 7 onwards. Uh, we'll read that. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7 onwards. But if the ministry of death in letters engraved on stones came with glory, so that the sons of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of the glory of his face fading as it were. Now, can, it, can anybody tell which, which covenant is this? The ministry of death in letters engraved on stones came with glory. Can anybody tell which? Is it a new covenant or a old covenant? Anyone? Old covenant. Old covenant, right. Who said that? It's me, Vipul. Vipul, sorry. Okay, okay. Okay. So that's a, uh, very clear, no? Because speaking about Moses also. So, so the ministry of death in letters engraved on stones came with glory. So that sons of Israel could not look intently on the face of Moses uh, because of the glory of his face fading as it was. How shall the ministry of the Spirit fail to be even more uh, to be even more with glory okay so what is the min the ministry of the spirit is which covenant i was talking about two ministry ministry of death and ministry of the spirit so ministry of death we said is the old covenant ministry of the spirit is which one new covenant Okay, so I will go further. For if the ministry of condemnation has glory, much more does the ministry of righteousness abound in glory. So what is speaking about? For if the ministry of condemnation has glory. So which is the ministry of condemnation? Yeah, anybody else? Old covenant. Okay, ministry of condemnation is the old covenant. Okay. Uh, how much more does the ministry of righteousness abound in glory? So, which is the ministry of righteousness? Anybody? You govern and rule. Right. So, that is the, uh, so it's speaking, uh, you know, the two ministries one, the ministry of death or the min uh, and the ministry of spirit, and ministry of condemnation, ministry of righteousness. So, uh, yeah, so uh, so the law was given. Uh, the ministry of condemnation or the ministry of death is the old covenant. The law was given primarily to bring the knowledge of sin. Okay, people did not know what was sin. The law was given to. So now, if we preach in our message, we are preaching and giving a lot of uh, this about our uh, this is sin, that is sin, this is sin, that is sin. We are preaching the old covenant way, okay? The, uh, the, old, the law was meant to preach about, uh, to bring clarity about sin. So uh, then uh, preaching which leads people to feel guilty and condemned. You know, so when we preach, I used to do that. I used to, I used to sincerely feel I should preach on something. And then you think that, okay, people have got touched, you know, and uh, all, all such things we feel. Then the preaching of preaching of rules and regulation, you know, you must do this, you must do that, touch not, taste not, all these are, uh, that sort of thing. And then the other, the other thing is, if you do good, God will bless you. If you do bad, God will punish you. Blessings on obedience and curses on disobedience. That is, in, that is found in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Okay. 
Okay, now the Ministry of Condemnation uh, or the, the ministry, the Old Covenant ministry, the skin of Moses, when he, Moses was before God, he was in the presence of God, so his face, the glory of God came upon him. So his face started shining and there was a glow on his face. So when he came down, uh, people knew that there was something, but he was speaking with God. But that as he came down and spent time, that, that glory was fading. So what he used to do, he didn't want, he didn't want people to know that. He used to put a veil over his face so that people could not see that. Okay, The glory was fading. And even so, the old covenant life is not something which goes from glory to glory. We, we don't see the life of David becoming from one degree of glory to another. He was a, when, he was, when he was young, he was such a wonderful uh, this thing. Of course, he was a man of after God's own heart. But that, that is the old covenant life. Okay, And uh, so glory does not increase, but it can fade. Okay, Now, the ministry of righteousness, as we saw, is a, represents the new covenant. Okay, Now, the ministry of righteousness is like this. The words that we speak uh, must bring life. That's what it says no? in 2 second, in second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 says, Who also made us adequate as servants of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The spirit gives life. So if we speak and it brings life to the people, that means it brings encouragement. First Corinthians 14, 3 says, uh, the, the prophecy brings, a, brings about exhortation, edification and consolation. True prophecy. From God brings about exhortation. That means we exhort and we you know encourage people. Edification. People are edified and encouraged, and consolation. People are, you know, again consoled and encouraged and lifted up. So that is the work of the prophecy, and that which each one of us can do. Not only in the meetings, whenever we speak to somebody on the phone or to anybody, I, I make this prayer daily in my life. Lord, whenever I speak, let me prophesy. Let me, whenever I write to somebody, let me let me let me prophesy. Let it bring life to people. Let it bring an encouragement you know, to them. So, and then the transformation into the likeness of Jesus by seeing the, His glory. Uh, we read that in uh, uh, we read that in Second uh, Corinthians chapter three, verse uh, uh, fifteen onwards. Okay, sorry, verse sixteen onwards. But whenever a man and turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. You know, before coming to the Lord, there is a veil over us. Okay, we cannot, the natural man does not see the things of the Spirit, it says. So when when we come to the Lord, when we turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away, and then we are able to behold God. Okay. Now, when the Lord, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. Then it says, But be all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as the lord uh, lord the spirit so here in the new covenant uh, we have an unveiled face now the veil is lifted up and now we can behold jesus in our circumstances now when we are say we are having some argument okay and we are really getting into this and then suddenly we realize what would jesus do and then we look up into the mirror and we see jesus would behave in a different way and just as we see that, how Jesus would, we have only to just see that face of Jesus and automatically we become like him. And it says from glory to glory. This is the wonderful thing about the new covenant that uh, the Bible says, uh, you know, if, though it's in the Old Testament, it says the, the, uh, what is it? the righteous man uh, is fresh and full of sap even in the old age. So unlike any every other uh, Sport in sport, you find the uh, young age is the best, and then as they go older, they fade away. But in the Christian life, you see the old people, you see Brother Zach huh? and all the older uh, brothers, Brother Ian, all that they have got treasures. The glory increases, okay. So, and there's another thing is that just instead of like Moses trying to cover, there is a transparency, we want to live an open life. Want to? That should be the desire of each one of our. That is the desire of my heart. That I don't. I don't mind if somebody sees my failure. That that should not be. That should that should be the attitude. If somebody sees my failure, as long as God has seen, what is puny man? So uh, we are afraid. You know what man will think and all those things. 
but <clears throat> that is a transparency that we need to have and one important thing there is no condemnation in christ okay god does not bring condemnation to his children okay that's written in the word of god it's not my words romans 8 1 says therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus romans 8 34 says uh, let us let me read that properly romans 8 34 says who is the one who condemns christ jesus is he who died yes rather who was raised who is at the right hand of god who intercedes for us so interceding and condemning will not go together so condemnation is not from god and first thessalonians 5 9 says we are not destined for wrath okay those who have accepted christ and who are following him uh, there is a great wrath to of god to come but it but it is for the children of disobedience but we are not destined for wrath i am not destined for wrath i am not living with the feeling fear that the wrath of god is coming no i am i am living in the love of god okay okay the righteousness of god or true righteousness is reckoned to us by faith you know the righteousness when we speak is not like you know we do some good things and that is the righteousness the righteousness of god is the righteousness which we get by faith and by that from that righteousness stems out all practical righteousness as it found in first john chapter 3 7 so this is the word Uh, fortunately, I've completed it.